Hello, for those who don't know me, my name is Eric. In this van life video, I will talk about an important concern which is the future of van life. Here's my modest contribution to perhaps help van life be a form of travel that we can continue to enjoy. We live in a world of interdictions. There are always new laws being added to limit this or against that. We see those legal constraints and fines adding up more and more. Personally, I cannot remember a regulation law that was removed. We just keep stacking them. At some point, there will be more restrictions than permissions. All those restrictions were written because of someone's bad behavior. We probably all think this is because of the others, not us. We often think that our actions are well, pretty good, right? But are they? Here are three important considerations that I think could help and ensure that van life stays and grows as a welcome form of travel and way of life. Please let me know your point of view at the end of the video. Contribution Why not make the word contribution a key word defining the ethos of van life. When we use free toilets, free toilet paper, free places to sleep, free Wi-Fi, free water, free parking lot, etc., we take. I am proposing to have a mindset in giving back. Contributing is giving back. When a business, a municipality, a county, a state or a government is allowing us to sleep on their land, either by lack of interdictions or by clearly welcoming overnight parking, I think that we should try to contribute back. Don't you think? Personally, if a store welcomes me to sleep on its parking lot, I accept their hospitality and return it by purchasing whatever I need in that store. I will not always need something at that specific moment but whenever I will need something in my day-to-day -day life, I try to support them as they do for me. Returning to people who give to you makes sense to me. It is the same for restaurants. I cannot afford to eat there each time I sleep in their parking lot. However, when I feel like taking a break from cooking or enjoy something different, I will eat at those places. When I consume free internet from a restaurant or a store, I remember it. This place is friendly to me. It is the same for toilets. Somebody must be paid to clean those toilets. Someone will replace the toilet paper, that soap, that paper towel, etc. That establishment pays for all this and offers it all to me. That's why my first rule is to consume where I consume. I would hate to live in a world where I would have to pay for every gesture I want to make, every single services at every single moment. I would feel like living in a business world. It is much more fun and cool to be living in a friendly world where we can share with civility. I still hate to pay for a parking spot in a free world, but consuming local products makes sense for the benefit of enjoying a free service. When a municipality welcomes me with a friendly parking spot to stay for free, I try to consume in that town. Fuel, food, products, whatever. It is about feeling grateful and giving back. For me, it is kind of how to live and how to be. If they have a donation box, I give. Even a small amount will be appreciated. It is a way to say, thanks, I will be back. A kind note will also be welcomed if you don't have the money on that day. That note will give the human perspective to the accountant collecting the money, rather than speaking constantly about trading to get your money. I am not always in the need of something, so I cannot consume all the time. But when I will have the chance to give back, I will, even if it is at a different location. Plus, it feels good to give back. Healthiness. They say that cleaning clears your mind. When you go in the outdoors, there are two sayings. Leave no trace and carry in, carry out. 
For van life, we should extend those rules to carry in and carry out more. When I stop in an area to eat, sleep or enjoy the place, I try to pick up what trash I find and put it where it should be. That way, I leave the place cleaner. If van life contributors notice that we leave the place cleaner, they will support us more and there would be more contributors favorable to our way of traveling. Fires, yes, when permitted. Leave no trace includes not leaving a fire spot where there was none. The burnt vegetation and carbonated wood pieces are not aesthetic and are not fun to clean up. The mark of an improvised fire remains for a long time. If there is no obvious official fireplace, maybe a fire is not a good idea. And when a sign says no fire, well... Recycle I do not have plenty of place in my van, but still, trying to recycle is not that difficult. On the road, it takes more time to find a recycling bin than a garbage can, but it's still worth it. Sound of silence Where we stay at night or where we spend the day, people often live nearby. They probably do not want to have noisy newcomers every night or every day. A generator is inappropriate, not only for locals, but for anyone boondocking around. Partying loudly is the same. That's how restrictions appear. Van life is about enjoying nature and passing by without disturbing anything or anyone. Sensitive vegetation There's a reason why some places do not want tents. Tents leave a footprint. Putting up a tent has an impact on vegetation. In dunes, by the beach, it will destroy grasses protecting against erosion. People should tent only on designated spots. When you think about it, a tent most often requires a campground. Vans and RVs stays on roads and parking lots. There's no footprint. If you want to sleep where vans, RVs and car camping do, you may consider having one of those vehicles. Be friendly when boondocking. Thirdly, be friendly and share. If a rig is too big, it should be where it should be, at a campground. Van life is not mobile home life. Converted van, SUVs, car and small RVs require a small footprint. When a rig is too big, it will take the place of others. If there's a large enough place or designated spot, of course it's fine. But taking more place at the detriment of others is not cool. We stop by to sleep, not to camp. Arriving first does not allow one to take more place. Also, be careful the way you park not to leave someone without a place. Taking more than your share is obviously out of place. Why not start a new movement that will say, friendly and civilized as a van lifer? Here's my conclusion. For all those who reject van lifers, please reconsider this. Placarding interdiction is not a good way to attract business. For us all van lifers, remember this. Consume where you consume. Carry in and carry out more. Recycle. Enjoy the sound of silence. Be friendly and civilized as a van lifer. Van life is living in harmony for the benefit of all. I invite you to share this video on other platforms that you think can help promote behaviors that will contribute to van life. If you have a van life team YouTube channel, I invite you to share that video at the ending of your videos. Even more if I have helped you build your van with my videos. I really would like to hear from you. What is your personal opinion about the suggestion and point I have made here? Do they make sense to you? Do you have other good ideas and practices to share? Don't forget to let me know from which country, state or town you have watched this video. That's a great way to feel that we are sharing from everywhere. See ya!